Hey guys, yesterday I did a video talking about what it's like to work remote in 2019 and the state of remote work and I kind of, my dogs jumped in the room. I, I kind of thought I'd let them in the video, kind of give you an idea of like what it's like to work differently from your house where you're at home with your family, uh, in my case, my pets and my girlfriend, as well as, um, you know, what is my take? Uh, for those of you who don't know, I do work full-time remote and I've been doing that for about two months. Before that, I was doing about three days a week. So I thought I'd share a little bit of my opinion. I didn't share it really in that video and sort of my experiences because, well, it's already a 30 minute video. <laughs> so we'll, we'll get it down to about 10, 15 in this and let you know about uh, if it's gonna be right for you and what to expect. <laughs> Might I take a moment to recommend our long-term sponsor? Long-term, as in we've been working together for almost three years now, which is pretty crazy. And a lot of changes have happened at Dev Mountain. They've changed a couple locations in the past to now they're in the Lehigh area. They're also in Dallas and Phoenix. But if you're interested in considering a coding boot camp, might I recommend devmountain.com. They have programs in full-stack JavaScript, iOS development, QA, UI, UX. You can find out more information at devmountain.com. So I've been working full-time remote for about two months, and it's actually been a really great experience, something that I don't know that if I'm given the opportunity, if I'd ever not do it again. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily right for you. So um, for me, I personally love it because I get to have lunch at home, and I don't have to drive to the office, and it's a lower stress environment. And you know, we'll talk all about that in a later video. Before we do that, I want to talk about what a lot of the majority of my channel is aspiring developers or junior developers, and a lot of us in our life are have thought about working remote. And I don't necessarily recommend it for people who are just getting started in their careers. Part of the reason is I think there is some value in going into those stressful environments and being there in person and learning about the business in the in a more um, you know, part of part of working remote is you're a little bit disconnected from um, a lot of the less development parts of the business, and being on site, uh, it's been my experience. You're a little bit more interconnected, and you also get the added benefit of being able to work alongside devs and pair program. And you can pair program remotely, and I, I do, but I I think I I think in person it's a little bit more effective in that aspect now so as a junior developer i never really wanted to work remote and i think that was one of my great benefits that i never tried to do that is because i when i was on site i always tried to take advantage of everyone i always tried to steal knowledge because if, if you think that the average senior developers make hundred fifty thousand dollars plus by you being able to pick their brain 30 minutes a day you're essentially getting a free hundred dollars of tutoring every single day or free fifty dollars tutoring every single day and so in my mind i was getting a thousand dollars of value a month plus <clears throat> and you know more so because then that thousand dollars of you know time to cost ratio i'm actually increasing my skills so that i can get my hourly rate up and that's what i recommend you do so there's a lot of things that you can learn outside of the job but i, I do think there's some benefit to aspiring developers that are early on in their career up until they're at a senior level i think you should just go in the office not to say that you can't work remote part-time but i wouldn't do full remote um if you're if you're lucky enough to get it i think that's fine but i do think that you may miss out on skilling up faster um you know and again everyone's an exception to the rule but uh, you know uh, but I, that would be my recommendation now what are my takes on working full remote um and why do i like it so much well there's the very obvious time benefit. I did a video a little while back about how I work uh, remote three days a week and it saves me $12,000 a year, um, give or take. And you could half that if you want, if you didn't like my hour to cost ratio. But in, just in terms of what it takes me to go to work, like wear and tear on the car at like 50 cents a mile, it came out to like six grand a year. <coughs> and then there's time benefit. So by me not going to work, I say seven and a half hours of driving. 45 minutes there, 45 minutes back, five days a week. Um, then I save the um, 60 miles a day, and then I save the gas and all and the tolls. And so there's that very financial aspect. But that's believe it or not, the um, the time is something I really value. The money I'm not too worried about. But the thing that I 
I particularly like about being remote more than anything else is, um, it's going to sound silly, but working from home. So (laughs) um, in the sense of, it's not like I hate being in the office, but this is this is where I work. I have a separate space. And that's one one thing I, I would suggest if you're going to work remote, you need to have a separate office. You need to treat it as if it is your job because it is your job. Um, and so that's something that uh, allowed me to transition very easily as I have my separate space. My door is closed. Uh, if I'm in a meeting and you know, my girlfriend knows that I'm working up here and it's, it's one of those things that you should also have a conversation about if you live with other people. Um, for those of you who don't know, my girlfriend's doing a um, coding boot camp full time. So she is downstairs in her office uh, about 10 hours a day grinding it out. Sometimes she comes up here, but um, you know, she'll shoot me a message. If I don't get back to it for an answer, she'll sometimes come up here and she'll see if the door's closed, she knows I'm in a meeting and so on and so forth. But you have to have that conversation because this is your work environment. And, and it, it's not something that's going to always click. The, before she was doing her thing, and I was working from home. She'd come up, hey, can you do this? She's just like, no, I got, I'm working, <laughs> I'm working. They don't pay me to, you know, do the dishes. That'd be pretty dope. <laughs> but maybe when I'm on my lunch break, I can do the dishes. So that's that's one of the cooler things about it. Also, is you get the added benefit of being able to, you know, have the flexibility, which is something nice. But for me personally, the thing I enjoy most is being able to go down, say hi to her. You know, I take. At work, not at work, about every hour or two, get up, stretch my legs, walk downstairs, walk upstairs, say hi to the dogs, pet them. You know, um, they come in here, you know, as I'm working and I'm in the zone, the dog come up, you know, uh, grab a water bottle. They like chew on these water bottles. Grab a water bottle, give me a little smile, wag his tail out. It's this, it's a, (laughs) it's, you're in your home. Like your home is your sanctuary. And so I think it's a very pleasant thing to be able to work in your, your, your castle, right? Um, you know, sanctuary is kind of a weird word, but castle, uh, <laughs> it's your, your domain, um, you know, and having a separate office space, you can have that separation of sort of work and play. And I think that's something that you, a lot of people need to focus on as well as understanding, um, uh, where they're, where your day ends and where your day starts, because, People who are very stressed about their job and and struggling and, and remote wise may actually feel like they always have to get something done, or the company is going to feel like that's not the case. And I, I think that's a very unhealthy thing. And um, I think if you are struggling with imposter syndrome, you may struggle a little bit with working remotely. And part of that is um, one, you you need to be much more self sufficient. So you probably don't think you are, and, and maybe you're not, and that's okay. And two you need to um, not be afraid to get stuck, reach out for help. And three, you need to not feel obligated to get everything done that exact moment, that exact moment, that exact moment. And, you know, I always try to get to a good stopping point. And sometimes I'll work a little later. Like tonight I worked a little later because I got a PR out for something that fairly high priority and then i was like okay cool and then i noticed i made a big mistake in it and it it happens right you run your test you 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 do something right after your test right and you're like oh i ran all this i know i changed that one line but now i gotta do it again now the pr's gotta build again and then i noticed that my fix i made a mistake in my fix and i was like okay and then i worked an extra 45 minutes something like that but you know that's it, it, it's okay on occasion and stuff stuff like that. But if you really suffer with sort of imposter syndrome, and I've seen this in other people, all of a sudden you're working late, you're working this, you're working that because you want to seem busy instead of being busy. So um, I think a separate office and having the right mentality that you are working. Someone's not paying you to be on vacation at your house. You know, you are doing this full time as a professional and, you know, not not every company has to continue being remote. So to a degree, you have to prove yourself, but that's the wrong mentality because you should already be like, well, I'm a professional. I'm doing my job. And if you feel like you're cheating the system, you might try and work later hours. And um, I think that's part of the reason some people don't like remote. I think I'll, I think some employees like the fact that someone's looking over their shoulder and seeing that they're there. Maybe they're not going as fast as they think they should, but they're there. Um, 
And that's one of the things that I think is it's why maybe if you struggle with imposter syndrome, it might be bad for you um, until you get over that. And hopefully it should be a goal of yours. And a good way of getting impo- over imposter syndrome is just getting good. Um, you know, there's books, there's courses, there's projects you can build, whatever. Just get good. A little bit of effort every single day, you'll be in the top 10% of your field relatively quickly. That's it. Just a little bit of effort every single day. And there's various ways that you can do it, but just move forward a little bit every day and, um, you know, you, you'll be able to enjoy that remote life. <laughs> and uh, to give you an idea of like what's so, you know, not only do you get to have one, one thing I like about being home, being with my family, being able to have meals at the house versus eating out or bringing lunch and all that is in a, in a couple of weeks time, I'm uh, with two, uh, two of my other buddies who are developers who they, they, they work remote a couple days a week, but not, uh, one of them works full time. The other one doesn't, we're just taking off for a week. We're just going to go to a city and we're going to go eat some good food, travel a little bit, um, go to some museums and we're flying out to go see some stuff. And, you know, remote gives you that flexibility. We're going to work in the mornings. We're going to go out on the nights and weekends. And, you know, there's a, a lot of flexibility in that stance, uh, in that, from that standpoint, um, in a couple months, I'm going to go visit another buddy. And then, in, uh, you know, six weeks after that, I'm going to go see my mom for a couple weeks and, and do all that. So here you do have these options where, you know, I, I feel like at times, at least for me, um, that I have uh, been very serious about my <coughs> my career. And um, I always want to be a good employee in the sense of, um, like, I want, I want to make sure I'm doing a good job because I take pride in myself as a professional um, while not putting too much effort in the fact like like there's a there's a good like i i work 40 hours pretty much every week but i work 40 hours there's people who work 60 hours because they work 40 hours you get what i'm saying where like they put in extra time because the effort for those 40 hours wasn't enough so i work a strong 40 hours i'm focused i'm sort of dilly dally i'm not over here watching youtube and chatting it up i'm i'm doing my thing I'm knocking out tickets. I'm I'm doing one. I'm coming up with solutions. I'm helping other people. I'm I'm doing PRs, whatever it is, um, because I you know I want to be a good employee. I don't want to work a lot of hours. I don't think working extra hours and lowering my cost of uh, hourly cost and my effort and my mental strain is worth me being a good employee. Because I don't think that makes you a good employee. Um, but I'm getting a little off tangent. Um, but yeah, the the flexibility to travel is something that I'm. You know, as someone who has put a lot of effort in there, I've worked pretty much every single day for about four years. And I said I was going to do it for about five. I'm getting a little burnt out. And with that, another goal of mine has been to get my finances together and investing and, you know, saving, getting eliminating debt, all that sort of stuff. And we've we've done very well in that fashion. And because of that, we've put a lot of things on hold. We haven't taken a vacation in several years. I haven't been able to travel as much as some of my colleagues have and some of my friends have and my, my brother for that matter, because I've, I've been very fiscally conservative and <coughs> worried about ramping up the career. And the remote aspect allows me to do such things why I can travel and, and go see some things and um, enjoy life a little bit without having to you know, use PTO, um, and stuff like that. So like, I'm going on on like a 10 day trip. I'm not using any, any PTO except maybe one day. I might use one day to go and, um, to something that we have to see in the morning. But anyhow, that's a little bit about my experience working remote and a little bit of pros and cons for you for personality wise. Um, just make sure you have good communication. Make sure that you are putting in your 40 hours, make sure that you have a separate office, make sure everyone in your household's on the same page and um you know make sure that you take advantage of being in person in those couple early years to um make sure you can love remote that much more i suppose but with that being said guys thank you so much for watching if you are interested in any of my courses there's links in the description below you can get them for just 9.99 i'll see you guys next time bye Hey guys, don't forget to hit that notification bell or smash that like button while you're at it. And if you're interested, I just released my latest course, the 100 Front End Technical Question Challenge, which is there to help you pass those front end technical interviews. There's over 100 questions. You can get it for just $9.99. The link is in the description below or use coupon code CODINGGOD.